Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffin's occasional series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we're looking at limits, calculus limits in MATLAB. Excuse me. <coughs> um, I won't be going into the theory of limits, I'm just going to show you how to do limits in MATLAB. Okay, big thing if you don't have the symbolic toolbox in MATLAB, you just can't do it, so you have to check that first. Again, I did a this isn't the most robust program, it's just to show you how to do limits in MATLAB. So I don't have Symbolic Toolbox on this particular machine, so I had to make a script and make a PDF out of it and uh, publish it, so we have it here. So, uh, so as before, we clear the screen, uh, we close all figures and we clear the workspace. And so, just through there you are. So you have to have the symbolic toolbox. So there we are, we've declared sims and we've said f there is, is cos x, this is a simple way of doing it. And this is line here. So we've got the limit of f which is cos x as approaching pi, so pi is approaching. So, And if you're new to it here you're probably wondering why did I put the double in front of it? Well, when we say the limit of f, <coughs> comma pi, we get a symbolic answer. But I wanted to use s, s printf to display the answer, so I had to convert a symbolic answer to a double. It's the only way I could get it to print. So this thing here is a cast operator. You're changing the the variable type from symbolic to double you could convert it to real or something like that but just for the moment so s print f so screen print format the limit of cos x to offset as x approaches pi is percent f comma answer and the answer is what we've got here okay so there's just down here the limit of cos x as x approaches pi is minus one okay just one or two slight quirks in matlab then we get f up of f, which is cos x, so cos x uh, pi over 2, uh, s print f there. And here, uh, what's going on here? Well, I said the 2 means two decimal places <coughs> in front of the decimal point, and the 19 means 19 decimal places after the decimal point. So the number of cos x as x approaches pi over 2 is 0, 0, 0, 0. And then I said I'd just get the cos of pi over 2, uh, which should be 0, but as I discovered, 2.219, so 2 before this point and 19 afterwards. And when we go there, we don't quite get 0, we get a some sort of rounding error. So uh, why that is, I don't know, but that should be 0. So we get the correct answer, really, uh, using the... The limit, but we get a slightly incorrect answer when we don't, when we just get the cos of y over. You know why that is? As I say, I don't know. Uh, one other one here, we get uh, the limit of x approaches as x approaches one of e to the x, and as you would expect, then is two point seven one. And I didn't use there. Just sorry for jumping around the place. I didn't say any number of points after the decimal, or any number of places after the decimal point, I just left it blank right there. Okay, as you would have done in your maths lecture, whoever is lecturing you, um, you sometimes you get non-existing limits. So how does Mat MATLAB deal with that? So I did here the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches 0. So as you would imagine, rather than anything too dramatic, as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, 1 over a very, very small number gives us a very, very large number. So, yeah. So there, the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches 0 is infinite. And then I did 1 over x cubed. When you get 1 over x cubed, you get nan, and nan is a number. I think we met this before, doing the complex numbers. 1 over x cubed is carried on down a bit further. Now, you would have done in your maths lecture, you could have say approaching from the left side, approaching from the right side, etc. So, what we're saying here is the 1 over x cubed of x, as x approaches 0 from the right side, in other words, x is positive, 
and we get infinity there that line there jumps to that line there then I said here 1 over x cubed is x is approaching from the left hand side in other words minus numbers and we get minus infinity and then again this is unexplained I just banged it in without using left or right and the answer to that is MATLAB seems to get confused it is not a number now I suspect what's going on is that <coughs> you have plus infinity on one side and minus infinity on the other side and MATLAB says I'm confused and when it gives I'm confused you get um, not a number one other one here the limit of the absolute value of x as x approaches 0 uh, and we have that there and yeah I'm just wondering why I see it twice but anyway uh, when you're doing it there uh, is 1 and then it's minus 1 from the other side ok oh yeah sorry there they are just there so that line there gives us that result there and these two lines here gives me that result there so that makes sense can you do limits at infinity? I can so you have 4x cubed minus 2x minus x cubed plus x squared minus 1 I think from memory it's a uh, loppy tiles rule you divide by the highest power so, I so as far as I remember so yeah it is so it's 4x cubed over minus x cubed they cancel and that leaves you uh, minus 4 and then the limit of the dunk as x approaches infinity is minus 4 so you would have done loppy tiles rule in class and there's exp to the x of minus infinity and you get 0 some other funnies you probably met in class the limit of sine x as x approaches infinity and again here um, that is not a number okay because and then uh, down here sine x how about that oh I haven't got that quite worked out uh, from the left hand side is not a number and from the right hand sorry sorry sine x that's down there is not a number this line here gives me here okay so you would have done sine x over x in class and then here the square root of x now I didn't use an s print f here because it's going to get complex and I can't converting it to a double it just won't work so that should have given me for some odd reason apologies now something didn't happen there I'm just going to leave it to you in class the limited square root of x from 0 from the, uh, as approaches 0 from the left hand side and then we have the limited square root of x as approaches from the right hand side so here from the left hand side we're going to end up with complex numbers so you can investigate as to what MATLAB does and from here the square root of x as x approaches from the right hand side will give us positive some numbers so that is the only one that makes sense okay oh sorry I know why I didn't get it here just ink I did uh, I published it here and from this thing here that would have appeared in the uh, the command window and the result doesn't appear in the published file so that's why we don't actually see the result here but when you run it you'll see it uh, log x so just some slightly other ones going over here now log x so log x approaching from the left hand side I did log x just zero and I did then I did log x approaching from the right hand side so this one there if you just say the left hand side you get minus infinity plus pi i so you get a complex answer as you would imagine 
this one here without using left or right it gets confused with not a number and then finally uh, from the right hand side here you get minus infinity and again I suspect what's going on with this not a number is from the left hand side you're getting a complex number from the right hand side you're getting minus infinity and when you leave the left and the right out that's this line here excuse me you're getting a complex from the left you're getting minus infinity from the right and MATLAB says oh I'm getting different answers I'm confused so it gives not a number okay there'll be more exercise to do in class which will be supplied but I just just shows you how to do it thanks very much for listening